Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Solid, straightforward topic. Let's do it. What's the most frightening experience you've ever had on a flight? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. On a red-eye flight, everyone was asleep, but I can't sleep on planes. A few rows behind me, a girl started screaming, Mama, Mama. The flight attendants walked over, then ran back then ran over holding a defibrillator, then walked the hysterical girl, looked to be about a teenager, to the front of the plane, then walked back with blankets. When the plane landed, no one was allowed to move. A stretcher came on board and wheeled the blanket-covered body out. The sobbing girl followed behind. I can't imagine losing a parent on a flight, with nowhere to go and no way to contact anyone else for help, surrounded by noisy strangers in tight quarters. On a flight from Denver to Houston, a woman hit the call button, talked to a stewardess, and was escorted to the back of the plane. As she walked by, I saw that her skin was gray in color, and she looked really scared. The request for a medical professional came over the PA, and the woman in front of me got up to assist. She came back after 10 minutes, and I overheard her tell her husband the woman didn't make it. I then saw a stewardess get a guy that looked like a biker out of his seat and take him to the back of the plane. The biker-looking guy was only there for a minute, then went to the airplane's galley for a while. I'm thinking he must have been an air marshal. My other experience was flying from San Francisco to Denver. The plane was loaded, and it was time to take off, but we just sat at the gate. The pilot announced we would be leaving soon, and that we were late taking off because they had to balance out the luggage. Finally, after about 30 minutes after we were supposed to take off, the plane backed out and went to the runway. Once again, we sat on the tarmac, this time for another 30 minutes. The pilot got on the PA again and said we had to return to the gate because the plane was low on fuel from all the idling. Back at the gate, three armed law enforcement officers entered the plane and escorted a man off. After that, the pilot announced that we were finally ready to take off and that the previous wait was actually due to a security issue. Flying in a small eight-seater from the mainland to an island, when a kitten got loose over the pilot's shoulder and generally being frantic. Type of scene that disaster movies start with. On a red-eye flight, a passenger sitting across from me had a night terror. They woke up screaming, thrashing, and didn't recognize where they were. It was unsettling for everyone on board. I was 16 and flying alone from Istanbul, Turkey to Seattle, USA to visit my sister, who had left Turkey early to go to school in the US. We were born in Washington State, so not as dramatic as it sounds. During the second leg of the flight from London to Seattle, I developed a urinary tract infection. It kept getting worse and worse. I spent the whole 10-hour flight having to pee urgently, going to the bathroom every 10 minutes, disrupting the poor passenger next to me getting one drop out, and crying on the toilet. I started passing clots of blood out of my urethra, which was excruciating. I was so shy back then and scared, but I really wish I had told the stewardess, so at least I could have had some emotional comfort to know what was going on. When I landed, as soon as I saw my sister, I burst into tears and said, take me to the ER. They said it was the worst UTI they'd seen in a while. The meds started working so fast. Truly a horrible, horrible experience. Yeah, that sounds absolutely horrible. I'm glad that the medicine worked quickly and you're all right. Flying out of Chengdu, China in the early 80s on an old Russian turboprop, it was a wicked snowstorm, and I'm thinking there's no way we're taking off in this mess. Visibility was only a few hundred feet. I'm looking around in panic and I realize the guy sitting across the aisle from me is a spitting image of Buddy Holly. I recall thinking that if this guy pulls a guitar out of the overhead bin and starts singing Peggy Sue, we are all effed. As soon as the engines revved up for takeoff, a woman started screaming like she was dying. The flight attendants couldn't get up to go to her until the pilot rang the bell about 5 to 10 minutes. She was screaming the entire time. Turns out her daughter put her on the flight even though she was terrified of flying. An attendant held her hand the entire flight, walked her all the way to meet the other daughter and tell her to never put mom on an airplane ever again. This was in 2015, luckily not during COVID as I probably would have been kicked off the flight. But suddenly I felt a tickle in my throat so I started coughing. 
but I could not stop coughing. No matter what I did, I could not get that tickle out. The people around me were understanding, but I decided to go to the back of the plane just to be courteous. The flight attendants gave me ice, and that was the only thing that would give me any sort of relief. We finally landed. That night, I went to bed and woke up at 5am with a swollen shut eye, huge effing lips, hives all over my body and a tightness in my chest. Turned out, I was having a severe allergic reaction to something I ate at the airport or something on the plane. My throat was literally closing on the plane. That's why the ice was helping, because it was bringing down the swelling. But here's the weird effing thing. I've never been allergic to anything in my life before or since that incident, so it's a huge freaking mystery. The hives also showed up in different places on my body each morning for two weeks after. Someone brought their cat on board in a carrier and put it under their seat, as if listening to a screaming cat for six hours wasn't enough. It shit in its carrier, so the entire plane smelled like fresh cat shit. The woman took it to the bathroom to clean it and got all the cat shit all over the bathroom. Fun times. One of those idiots in the ultralights flying around at a few thousand feet over a small city right in the approach pattern for major airlines. I'm disgusted by these people as they are a major hazard as they oftentimes don't talk, squawk, or give any indication that they're there until it's too late. On Halloween night in 1994, I was on a United flight from Vancouver to Chicago. Back then, Channel 9 on the in-flight entertainment system let you listen to air traffic control. That night as we approached Chicago, I was listening to Channel 9 when suddenly ATC told all other planes to quiet down. Then, they started calling over and over for another flight, American 4184 and asking the other planes if anyone else could see an ATR. This went on for a few minutes and then, click, Channel 9 was switched off. I felt a chill go down my spine. When I got to my hotel, I switched on CNN. Flight 4184 had gone down in a field in Indiana, and everyone was dead. Happy Halloween. A woman died in the seat next to me on a flight from Australia to the US. She appeared to just be asleep, but couldn't be roused by her traveling companions. Eventually, the flight attendants laid her on the floor and a doctor examined her. After a few minutes, they carried her to the back of the plane. I later asked a flight attendant when we landed and she told me the woman had died. Just, but didn't feel like just at the time, really bad turbulence. People's purses hit the ceiling of the cabin and I think some people who weren't belted in injured themselves too. People were screaming, praying, crying. I was in the last category. I wasn't crazy about flying before, but the experience put me into a phobia territory and I didn't fly afterwards for probably about 10 years and still weigh it as a cost-benefit thing whenever I travel. It's helped a bit to learn that turbulence isn't really a thing that causes plane crashes, as far as I now understand, but it can feel very different in that moment to the illogical mind. Took off after a 7-hour delay plane climbed for a little bit and went into a pretty tight bank turn. Captain comes on and says there's smoke in the cabin, and we were going in for an emergency landing. As we were coming in, there are the fire trucks and emergency vehicles waiting for us. Long story short, it was a wiring harness for the coffee maker. Swapped it out without even having to deplane. Got free drinks for the rest of the flight. Barely had our butts in the seat, and a woman turned to us and said, Are you two teachers? We responded with, No. And then she proceeded to talk the entire nine-hour flight about herself. Husband pretended to fall asleep within the hour, and I find it painfully hard to stop conversations with friendly people. Ugh. And we were seated right beside the toilets, which smelt of old pee. It's tough when you're trying to be polite and pleasant and then disengage. It's nine hours. Oh, sorry. Spent a five-hour flight from Sydney to Perth witnessing a man rapidly descend into a drug-induced psychosis due to the pellets of drugs inside of him absorbing into a system from within. The flight started out as normal, and as the man became more and more agitated, his speech became aggressive and incomprehensible to the woman beside him, with sweat starting to pour out of his body. He then got up and started pacing up and down the aisle whilst going to the bathroom every few minutes to, I assume, attempt to reorganize what was inside of him. This all came to a head when he was slamming the bathroom door open and closed, 
throwing his shoes out at passengers and screaming at the flight attendants, it's just because I need food. Somehow, the poor flight attendants were able to distract him until we landed, at which point he pulled out a small silver spoon from his back pocket, kissed it, looking up in the air in a we've done it way, only to be met with approximately 10 police officers and security waiting outside the plane who handcuffed and escorted him away. Shortly after 9-11, taking a flight home and a guy sitting across the aisle from me told me he blew up planes like this one for a living. I felt instantly lightheaded dizzy. I went up front and told the flight attendant. She thought the guy was making a poor attempt at flirting with me. In hindsight, 20 years later, she was probably right. But in the heat of that terrible moment, I was ready to have a full-blown panic attack. If I remember right, they landed the plane and the guy was taken for questioning. I was pretty mortified. Actually, still am. Probably a lot of mad people who just wanted to get to where they were going. I had food poisoning on a transatlantic flight from JFK to Heathrow. To top that off, we hit a large area of turbulence for an hour and a half, which led to the fastened seatbelt signs to be on. After the second rush to the toilet during this turbulence, the flight attendants seemed to decide all subsequent efforts to stop me would not be in anyone's best interest. Everyone behind us, myself and a friend, knew what was going on, and it would have been humiliating if I wasn't wishing the plane would dive into the Atlantic to end the nightmare. On an airplane, but not technically a flight, sitting at the end of the runway, pilot doing his pre-flight or something, there was a fireball in one of the engines. Passengers panicked. Flight attendants popped the emergency doors and the emergency slides deployed. It was mayhem. People knocking others down, crawling over the seats, lots of screaming. Several people were injured. Of those, I saw one man fell off of the wing. Found out later he broke his arm and collarbone. Another fell off the middle of the slide. She went away holding her wrist, not sure of what happened. Guy in front of me on the slide tumbled face first at the bottom of the slide, got up with a bloodied face. Emergency slides are not fun. It's not like in the movies. The ironic thing was, there was no danger to the aircraft or passengers. Flying into Denver, our plane dropped about 1,000 feet in severe turbulence and this mother effer was just trying to get something out of his bag after the announcement from the pilot about upcoming turbulence and the flight attendants yelling at him. He flew into the ceiling and slammed into the ground like something out of a movie and then got absolutely chewed out by the FAs. It was scary, I guess due to the Rockies and the Denver plane it causes some bad turbulence. Okay, I've got a couple. Was in a small four-seat beach craft with friends, one of whom was the pilot. Flying through clouds when pilot friend said to the other guy, horizon indicator wasn't working. I thought, but didn't say out loud, isn't that like really freaking important to have? Well, we got home safely, so apparently not. My other story is, I was on a plane coming home from London to DC on 9-11. Halfway across the Atlantic, the pilot announced that there was a state of emergency in the United States, and they weren't letting any planes land. I thought, what the f How is there a state of emergency in the whole country? Anyway, they turned us around and back to London. We went. Horrible, horrible day. I was safe, but things have never been the same. Rest in peace to those lost. I never forget. I had a woman next to me on a 15-hour flight with two kids under five. She sat next to me with the kids on the aisle, and the first thing she did was apologize for what was to come. It was terrible. Stuff constantly knocked onto the floor, a drink spilled on my leg, but that was just a woman herself. She soon swapped seats with the kids, just did normal kid stuff. They were not so bad at all, aside from the occasional accidental bump when they squirmed, while she continued to drop stuff on the floor, food, drink, phone, Basically, anything on her tray table was going to be on the floor sooner or later. 